everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great interviews from great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Today, I have got someone that is going to be probably the closest I would ever have gotten to see Ronnie James Dio in person. I've got Demian Fenn, who produced the upcoming release of Dreamers Never Die, Dio documentary. How are you doing, Demian? I'm doing great. How are you, man? I am so awesome. How did you, um, everybody knows uh, Ronnie James Dio. I was a big fan with, uh, I started out with Holy Diver, Last in Line, and then it kind of tailed off for me, went into other uh, genres. And then I didn't, I wasn't even a Black Sabbath fan in the original form with even Ozzy. But then I got into Ozzy, or excuse me, Black Sabbath. And then I, I was, a couple of my favorite albums of all time are Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules. Um, obviously, you must, well, I, you, you can't say that. You, you, I can't uh, stereotype. Are you a metalhead? I am a metalhead. Yes. So is that how you, well, tell us how you got involved uh, to be the producer of this documentary that's being released on the 28th. So I actually, the producer of this movie is a woman named Sheena Joyce. I'm one of the co-directors. Okay. And the executive producer is a woman named Kathy Dom, who works, uh, worked with BMG. And she had been talking, I believe, with Wendy a bit about the possibility of introducing her to us um, to uh, work on this Dio doc. And Kathy was uh, also sending us a bunch of different artists um, to see if we'd be interested in potentially working on a doc about any of the BMG artists. Okay. And when, when Don and I, who Don is the co-director, when we got the email, hey, would you be interested in a Dio doc? We freaked out within 0.5 seconds, said yeah. totally yes. We flew out to Los Angeles. We're both from Philly. And we, uh, we met Wendy and we gave her our pitch about um, how we would do this thing. And um, amazingly, she uh, trusted us. <laughs> wow. So that's how it went down, yeah. Well, with Wendy Dio, uh, I mean, from what I understand, she's kind of like for her to trust you and give uh, you her blessing. It's kind of like, and it's interesting how they cross paths. It's kind of like Sharon Osbourne and Ozzy. Like Sharon was a lot of the power behind Ozzy and the same thing with Wendy and, and Ronnie as her manager. Yeah, and you know, I don't know much about Sharon and Ozzy's dynamic, but I do know that um, Ronnie didn't give a shit about money. He, mm -hmm. didn't, he didn't care about money. He, care, he just cared about the music and he didn't care about the business. And I think you know, he and Wendy made the perfect team because she never interfered with his music stuff and he let her and fully trusted her do all the business stuff. And I got to say, with I don't think if Ronnie and we without Wendy, I don't know if we would have known Ronnie like we do, especially, I don't know if his career would have flourished in the 80s like it did. Yeah, I mean, to all the ladies out there watching the video, we, we realized the impact you have on our lives. So, yeah. Great, uh, great Wendy uh, for Wendy, and I'm pretty sure because um, because in the in the doc for people that are going to watch it, um, they talk about how her and Ronnie had some rough times where she would leave, come back, leave, come back. Leave, come. I didn't know that to be honest with you, and that's so that's great about the documentary. I learned that. Yeah, Wendy was you know very forthright about it. I you know Ronnie, as cool as he is, was. For all the fans, we know how great he was to all the fans, but I think um, he had such drive and such passion um, about his career and about his music. Uh, and he was a perfectionist. Yeah. That he, would, he, he would, it would be tough sometimes if you were in Ronnie's band um, or certainly if you were his uh, wife and manager, it got tough. I can imagine. Um, tell the viewers uh, just a list, a handful of the cameo uh, or not cameos, but um, people that you had on that uh, spoke throughout the uh, the documentary. I mean, we have, you know, Jack Black, Rob Halford, Lita Ford, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, you know, Vinny Appice, Bill Ward did an interview, which is great. Glenn Hughes, you know, it was yeah. just like a, the list goes on and on and just people that I completely respect and love uh so to to be able to you know be making a film about ronnie james dio is already kind of a sort of dream come true yeah. but then to, to have these guys and ladies open their doors and let us in and just it was it was amazing as a fan you know yeah. just amazing it's interesting uh don dawkins spoke as well as uh uh, Sebastian Bach and I'm, I'm wondering is Sebastian is that his full-time job now is appearing in documentaries because he's huh. quite a it, few it's uh, not but you know what I'll tell you 
he is a full throttle music fan. Yeah. Well, you know, we walked into his house and he, he, hey, you want a cup of coffee? And he gives you a cup of coffee. It's in a kiss mug. You know, uh -huh. he, he came to the premiere of the film when it screened at South by Southwest in Austin. He rolls in and he's got kiss destroyer luggage, you know, so he, <laughs> he is a full throttle fan. Yeah. That's why he keeps ending up in these documentaries. And the thing about Seb, too, not to segue away from Ronnie and stuff, um, he likes his vinyl, his original vinyl. I, I think that is something else that was so awesome. We go into his house and it just felt like, you know, I have a, a vinyl collection. I collect vinyl. I love it. And a lot of people, they, they always tell you how they used to have those records. Well, he, you know, opens his doors. He's got this vinyl room record players all over the house, speakers set up all throughout the house. Like, again, total true blue fan yeah and, and the thing uh, he brings to it as well for me for information as we get older we sometimes get out of uh, the music genre we stop following certain bands if they have members going in and out and um you know, kind of the same way with me with deal um I, I would still listen to holy diver and lasted line you know up until his his death and even now i listen to sacred heart and stuff but i wasn't following him as much and then when he went in heaven and hell but anyway sit uh sab said uh bible black in his opinion, is probably the best song he's ever written, and it was the last one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dig into those records, man. You know, it's really cool. I, I'm a little bit, uh, my path was a little bit maybe like yours. Like, I grew up on Holy Diver, Last in Line, um, but then I, you know, I found Slayer, and then I found more extreme, you know, death metal and stuff, and kind of took that path. And um, circled back around certainly to tons of classic metal and classic rock, but I missed a bunch of those records that Ronnie did, and it was awesome to go back and revisit those. Yeah. And to know that at the end of his life, you know, in his 60s, he's doing Bible Black. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Yeah, and, and there's a few that, um, as we're talking here, I'll be bringing them up. Rudy Sarzo, we got to mention. Uh, Craig Best Goldie. Man. Great. Um, and Viv Campbell, I was waiting. I thought for some reason, because um, it it's a two-hour doc, almost. Uh, well, it's more than that. It's 155 minutes. Um, I was waiting, and I was, wasn't sure if you were going to be talking to Viv. So you did have a chance to talk to Viv? We, unfortunately, you know, was, at the time, like, Wendy and Viv still don't work together. Yeah. Uh, and so as fans, we would have loved to do that. Um, that being said, Vivian's voice is in the film. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. So that was from a recording from a previous yeah. interview? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we hope, you know, I hope if he sees this film ever, he, he realizes that, you know, we cut that scene where he um, leaves Dio. We cut that 15 different times trying to get it right down the middle. It's an interesting moment in Ronnie's career where he's now the boss and he has to yeah. make some decisions about what to do with, uh, with Vivian and... Um, we just, uh, I think, we, I hopefully everybody feels, you know, we cut that right down the middle. No, it was really respectful, I gotta say, because I, I saw it. So, so yeah, there is a bit of animosity with Wendy, obviously, still. But the unique thing I found, and this is great about your doc, is that I didn't realize certain things, that little things like um, Ronnie was in his 30s when he hired Viv, who was 19, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know the exact age. I mean, Ronnie had already been through essentially three careers you know he he had done elf he had done rainbow and he had done sabbath so he had been around the pike and before he even got into elf he had put in all those years crooning you know in upstate yeah. new york the red hats and um, i gotta ask you uh, you might know who came first ronnie prophet the country singer or ronnie and the prophets i don't know because yeah that was dio second band i guess uh, so there's a country singer named ronnie prophet yeah, you didn't know that. No, no, I didn't. And I'm no. aiming I mean, myself. I'm not a country fan either. I don't yeah, hate country. I, Guys, I don't hate country. but I, I um, don't hate country either. I just didn't know that. I, I'm not well versed in it. Um, yeah, I think he was uh, the late 70s. I, I heard of him. Oh, well, then. Like Kenny Rogers, I heard of him. I did. But yeah, so I wasn't sure if you, uh, anyways, so. If it's late 70s, I mean, Ronnie and the Prophets was in the, you know late 50s early 60s yeah well then uh, they beat them out so um a couple takeaways from the uh, movie for people um should go see it it's uh being it's premiering um to the public on the 28th in canada i know that for sure 500 theaters and that's um next thursday 
next Wednesday or Thursday, September 28th. I'm, I'm not sure. And then October 2nd, it's also playing. Okay. Um, is that a North American? Um, opening? That's worldwide. It's worldwide. worldwide. And I got to say, I'm, I just got back from the Los Angeles premiere and seeing this movie like with a bunch of like-minded people, a bunch of Dio fans. Yeah. It's like a, it's a, it's a special experience. It's great. And I, I really do hope hordes of Dio fans kind of hit all these theaters. It's, oh yeah. It's really sort of, and I don't say this stuff a lot, but it really sort of is like a must see. Yeah, no, it is. In theaters with people kind of movie. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of docs over the years, but this one's very smooth. It's very, from the beginning until his unfortunate passing, but it's very good and transitional, transition wise. Um, one of the uh, great scenes was um, somebody was describing listening to Ronnie and singing the last in line. And it comes to that part where um, after the guitar playing and the bicycle and the video, where he says, we are coming home. Yeah, yeah, because his voice is so powerful. So I thought that was a great scene, man. That's cool. Yeah, that is Don Coscarelli, who directed Phantasm and uh, Beastmaster. And he also directed the Last in Line music video. So uh, we got to ask him about that. Last in Line music video is my favorite music video of all time. Oh, and it was great, eh? It reminds me of Vision Quest. Remember that movie? Yeah, I, re I remember that. Ronnie was on that soundtrack. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, how did you come up with the title? So uh, I was cruising around one day. We had been pitching a lot of titles around. Uh, I was listening to uh, Dream Evil and there's a song on there and uh, 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 could have been a dreamer. And then at the very kind of end, Ronnie's riffing a little bit and there's a line that says, uh, cause dreamers never die. Oh yeah. And, you know, we always knew this film was way more about, it's about Ronnie's music but it's really about his messages and it's about what inspired Don and I as kids, which is, you know, Ronnie out there telling people to just chase your dreams and, and, and never let anyone tell you you can't achieve them. Yeah. So the title is kind of cool. It has to do with that. It also has to do with his sort of his immortality. It has to do with like during his life, you know, you'll see he comes up against many obstacles, many times he could have, thrown in the towel and he never does so yeah. that's where the title comes from well he's kind of a workaholic that's another thing that people will see um he's a perfectionist um and that sort of thing um there's some funny things in here well i think it's funny anyways uh, there's a scene where don doc and kind of rags on poison on skinny bob <laughs> yeah yeah Don Dockin was awesome. We shot him at his house. I'm, I'm, I love those early Dockin records. And he's just really forthright. Everybody knows he's, he's just going to lay it down. He's not, he's yeah. not dude. No, and then there's the other scene where, well, the great thing about uh, Ronnie, he brought hearing aid when, you yeah. know, everybody else was doing their little pop stuff. And he got all these metal musicians together. And I, I love Spinal Tap. I love that movie so much. And I always laugh and crack up when that Michael McKeon, David St. Hubbins talks about. And we've got this great guitar player I met out in the lobby, uh, Ingve Malmsteen. And uh, he puts Ingve J. Malmsteen on the album so that not to confuse everybody with all the other Ingve J. Malmsteen guitar players out there. Yeah, totally. It gets a huge laugh. We just saw it in a theater with 500 people there cracking up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think I'll let you go. I think you got a couple more interviews to come up. And um, so December 28th, they can see it at all kinds of theaters uh, around the world. Um, online, is there any platform that you can purchase it? So right now, it's just September 28th, October 2nd. Um, and, you know, we're just hoping people hit that. Uh, down the line, there will be other places to see it. We're getting that all sorted out now. Okay. Perfect. Well, I'd like to thank you, Demian. And uh, what do you have to say to Canada uh, about the uh, documentary? What are they What are they in for? I say go see it. Go see it. I mean, you know, I, it screened in Toronto, and I think the dude, the dudes from Anvil were in in the audience, and I, I heard a few tears. So, wow. uh, so I think just you know, Canada has that spirit, that metal spirit, that the big metal heart, and just go check it out. This movie's totally for you. Perfect. All right, man. You take care and uh, thanks a lot.